Hi everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to manufacture some fiberglass polyester molds. But before we begin, let me tell you that in this video you will see two different parts of the same mold. We decided to show both parts because we use different fabrics on each one. But don't worry, we will go over it as soon as we reach that stage. As usual, we include a list of materials in the description box below and Pedro will be helping me. So, let's get started. Since we are going to work with dangerous materials, we will put on the protection equipment. For the first layer, we use the Christic 15 PA tooling gel coat. We then mix throughly the gel coat and methyl ethyl ketone peroxide and cover the whole surface of our mold using 6 to 700 grams per square meter. Follow Pedro's example and move the brush making small wavy movements. This will ensure no air is trapped below the surface. And then we follow the same steps with the other part of the mold. Let it cure before moving on to the next step. The reason why we place the pieces vertically is simple. Gel coat produces styrene, a gas that is heavier than air and therefore will be accumulated in the bottom of the mold. This accumulation prevents the gel coat from curing. So, to avoid this problem, we place the pieces like this. The next step is applying barrier coat. This is an optional step. Many people don't use it, but it improves the finish quality and also increases the lifespan of the mold. So it's especially recommended for molds that are going to be used many, many times. We use 600 grams per square meter of Cresta Gold 5000 PA and the same catalyst in the same proportion. Then we stir the mixture. The change in color means the chemical reaction is underway. Then repeat the same steps. Apply the mixture, making sure the whole piece is well covered using wavy movements with a brush and then let it dry vertically. In this second stage, we are going to laminate a skin coat using low aerial weight mats and low profile vinyl ester resin such as Christic 679PA. This laminate prevents the print through of the bulk plies used to build the main laminate. First, we mix the resin using a 2% of the same catalyst. We stir the mixture, again changing color is normal, and apply it on top of the mold. Then we place the mats. First, we use the 150 gram square meter fiberglass mat and begin by positioning the pieces next to the sides of the mold and later in the center. We apply more resin with the help of a brush. Remember, don't wipe the surface, just add pressure gently with the brush like Pedro is doing.
Once this is done, use the aluminum fine roller to remove the air from the laminate. Then, repeat the same process with the other part of the mold. For this second part, instead of using the 150 gram mat, we have decided to use the 30 gram surface bale. This is just an alternative. Both are fine. You will only notice the difference once the tool is finished. For this step, we only need the 450 gram fiberglass mat and the Christic RTR 4010PA tooling resin. It is recommended to apply at least four layers of this mat wet on wet, but this is up to you. Now, for each layer, this is what you are going to do. Apply a coat of resin, then the mat, add pressure like we did before, and use the roller to remove the air. Repeat these steps for each of the layers and let it dry. Once the resin is cured and the laminate is cold, use plastic or wood wedges to remove the polycarbonate sheet we use in the mold and also remove the molding in clay. Then, with the same wedges, remove the mold itself. Be careful because if you use too much force, you can deform it or even break it. And finally, we highly recommend to trim the edges using a radial saw. That's it. I hope you find this process useful and easy to understand. It's actually quite simple and repetitive once you get used to it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe and activate the notification button. I will see you in the next video.